Bam! Mr. Teru. Well, we just got done learning law of sine and law of cosine. We just got done learning that there's more than just one formula for finding the area of a triangle, and we've been working with finding missing parts of non-right triangles. We're going to bring some of those skills together in this interesting question. Uh, it's in two parts. You'll find the, the timestamps in the description to jump ahead to, say, part B if you so desire. You'll also find a link to um, a website where I have my lessons organized by subject and chapter with each, within each one of those subjects instead of uh, scrolling through playlists that are tens if not hundreds of videos long. Okay, the length of two sides in a triangle are five centimeters and two centimeters. We're going to let theta be the angle between the two given sides. The triangle has an area of two square root of six centimeters squared. We're going to show that the ratio for the sine of theta, this is a non-calculator question, so we're not going to actually find the measure of theta, but we're going to show that that ratio, the sine of theta, is equal to 2 square root of 6 over 5. And then, in part B, we're going to find the two possible values for the third length um, of the triangle. While our information, uh, you'll see, actually let's go ahead and just start with that. It's always a good idea to visualize what's actually going on. We have a triangle whose uh, two sides are 2 and 5. We have an angle theta be uh, between or included uh, within those two sides. So theta is right here. We have this triangle and the area of that triangle is 2 square root of 6. Now, We don't have a fixed theta, per se. Um, we have a ratio uh, for theta. The sine of theta, we're going to show that that's equal to 2 square root of 6 over 5. But that might possibly take on some uh, multiple values, opening the door for a couple of different uh, triangles that can give us the same area of 2 square root of 6. So how do we attack this problem? Well, let's see here. Whenever you're given a piece of information that has a formula attached to it, good chance you're going to start with that formula. Like if I said the distance between two points is 10, you're going to start off by setting up the distance formula. So the area here is equal to 2 square root of 6. Well, get my fancy picture in picture. Voila! We have three choices for finding the area of a triangle. One half base times height. We have area is equal to one half two sides and the sine of an included angle. Uh, that's kind of a giveaway right there, right? Um, we're trying to work with something of the sine of theta. And then we have Heron's formula where we find s, which is half the perimeter, and then work through the area is equal to the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. Three choices. Which one is going to be helpful? Which one works with angles and sine functions? Uh, it's the second one. Okay, so we are going to say that 2 square root of 6 is equal to 1 half of the two sides, so 2 and 5, times the sine of theta. It's a non-calculator question, and I'm trying to make this uh, question my own. Uh, so it works out you know, fairly cleanly, uh, very cleanly actually, one half of two is equal to one. We divide both sides by five and we have that two square root of six over five is indeed the ratio that we have for the sine of theta. So the first question starts off with recognizing that you're given information about area. Go pull that formula out that, you know, is most related to the information that is given. So, getting on to the more interesting part of this question, part B, find the two possible values for the length of the third side. So we can have, you know, sort of a triangle that looks like this, um, or maybe there's some other um, angle measure that gives us the same area. Maybe we can let this length of five and open up that angle so that, you know, you would think that maybe as you open this angle up that the triangle is going to become larger and, and therefore hold more area in that area, and that's true, but eventually as that angle continues to slide back open, 
that area is going to start to shrink back down to really effectively zero once that angle becomes 180 degrees or pi radians you would have on the verge of basically having a line segment where there's just barely a little sliver of an opening so with two and five there's um, you know another angle measure not that we're going to find the actual angle measure that will give you that same area of two square root of six how are we going to figure that out well again you have a question here that is asking for a missing part a third unknown side of a potentially non-right triangle so what did we learn that helped us find missing parts of uh, basically oblique or non-right triangles Leak is really the appropriate word, but non-right non -right triangle, that's either law of sine and law, or law of cosine. Law of sine or law of cosine. Simple, so katoa. Sine, such as sine is equal to, sine of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. It's only good for a right triangle. Well, look at what we have here. We have a triangle with a known side of 2, a known side of 5. Uh, we're working with some kind of angle. We know something about it. The sine of that angle is 2 squared of 6 over 5. And we're looking for the missing side opposite that angle. Well, that's not, you can't solve for that third side by using law of sine. You're going to be using law of cosine. So the law of cosine says that we have some side squared is equal to the other two sides squared and added together minus 2 times those other two sides basically times the cosine of the angle that's opposite that unknown side that you're trying to solve or maybe you know the opposite side and you're looking for the angle measure the side and let's call it a opposite this angle is going to be equal to the other two sides squared and added together. So 2 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 2 times 5 times the cosine of <clears throat> angle A or theta. Okay. So we have almost everything we need to find some information about that third unknown side but we need to know what the cosine of theta is equal to we know what the sine of theta is how we're going to use that to find the possible uh, ratios for the cosine of theta what identity allows you to link those two together you can draw a diagram which actually I prefer to do for many 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 of my questions um, in trigonometry but you also have that Pythagorean tr that those Pythagorean identities sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 1 plus um, tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta, and 1 plus cosecant or cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant of theta. So we are going to be using the fact that we have um, our Pythagorean identity saying that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Sine of theta is 2 square root of 6 over 5 squared. Now we have plus cosine squared theta equals 1. 2 squared is 4. Square root of 6 squared is 6. And 4 times 6 is equal to 24 over 5 squared, which is 25, plus the cosine squared theta equals 1. Subtracting that 24 um, over 25 over to the other side. We have, and I'll have to erase this to have more room, but we have cosine squared theta is equal to, let's find common denominators. The one is going to be 25 over 25 minus 24 over 25. Cosine squared theta then is equal to one over 25. And square rooting both sides of this equation tells us that the cosine of theta is going to take on the ratio of either 1 over 25 or negative 1 over, uh, oh, excuse me, positive or negative 1 over 5, not 1 over 25. Does it make sense that we can have a ratio for the cosine function that is both positive and negative? 
Well, if we visualize a x, we'll have to kind of talk this a little bit, but move this around. But uh, if we have an angle that is acute, then we have a sine ratio, which is in terms of angles in standard position, y over r. Okay, in quadrant one, your y values are positive and your x values, cosine is x over r, would be positive. If you open that angle up to be obtuse, then you can still have a sine ratio which is positive with sine being, uh, you know, with the rates equal to sine of theta is equal to y over r when you're talking about angles in standard position. In quadrant two, your sine ratios can still be positive where the cosine, which is x over r, is negative. So yes, it makes perfect sense that while the sine of theta is 2 square root of 6 over 5, meaning that theta can be in either quadrant 1 or 2, the cosine of that, at that angle measure may potentially be positive or negative. So, we're going to work with these two ratios. So all we have to do now is a little bit of careful arithmetic. What about for um, let's color code this. How about for cosine of theta being positive one fifth? Well, then we have a squared is equal to four plus twenty five, two squared and five squared, minus two times two is four, times five is twenty, so minus twenty. And then we're going to let the cosine of theta substitute that cosine of theta value in, substitute in that one-fifth. We have a squared is equal to um, 4 minus 20 divided by 5 is 4, so 4 minus 4 is 0. We have a squared is 25. And therefore we have a is equal to 5. Now this time, as I square root both sides of this equation, I'm not going to consider both the positive and negative answer because A here is a length of a triangle and there's no such thing as a negative length. So we'll have to make sure not to account for that as I look for some orange chalk. Okay, we'll just use red. So now we're going to take into account that the cosine of theta can be negative one-fifth. Again, two squared is four, five squared is twenty-five. Two times two is four times five is twenty, so minus twenty. But we're taking out the variable of cosine of theta and plugging in what it potentially can be equal to, which is negative one-fifth. Well, now we have negative twenty divided by negative five is positive four. We have 4 plus 4, which is what? 28. And now, or <laughs> try that again. 4 plus 4, which is 8. And 8 plus 25 is 33. Thus, the other possible length of the third side is A is equal to the square root of 33. I missed a true. Bam! Go do your homework.